So today we are going to continue from uh, where Errol left. Uh, we, uh, you have started with pipes and you talk about name pipes, I believe. I can show you a couple of uh, examples and then uh, move on to next topics. Uh, by the way, uh, in my Git repository, you can also find this all sources. It contains many uh, small C programs to illustrate, uh, especially IPC, multi-thread programming. Uh, uh, last week, we have this interactive part. We have this uh, web-based demos. Uh, you can check out and play uh, with them. So today, I can show you a couple of pipe tricks, uh, how to establish a pipe and so on in C. Uh, this is the one of the simplest one. Actually, it uh, stands for uh, the comments ls minus as is pipe to do share it with them. This program stands for this ls minus air pipe to usr bin tr slash a z is mapped to a z okay so this is uh, that comment and how to do that how to establish that with pipes is here uh, we create a pipe on this uh, two array, so we supply a two element array, and then a uh, very important thing we need to close the end that we do not use. So in the in this case, ls is not going to use this uh, input end of the pipe. It is going to output standard output will go to pipe, so it is closing it. Then it is duplicating the one end so that uh, the standard output of this will go to the so one is go to the pipe so the pipe is a different file descriptor actually so let us say k so with this uh, dub system call i make one instead of the terminal go to the pipe again and then i close again this file descriptor one so that's our principle. If you are not using it, close it. Okay. This is an important principle. We are going to talk about that in a moment. Then I exec binls. Last week we have seen that the exec system call will uh, inherit uh, the file descriptor table. So it doesn't change file descriptor table. So that ls output, ls doesn't know anything about the pipe. It prints on standard output and it's going to go to the pipe. Uh, in the uh, child end, because the fork is zero here, we do the reverse operation. First thing, we are not using the uh, output end, so we close it. Then I am doing my standard input. Zero is coming from a terminal, but I am going to duplicate it so that it is going to come from the pipe. And I close this and I just duplicate it. Actually, there is a mistake. Yes. So this should be at zero. Okay. Then I exact the same thing happens. Okay. So now if I execute this code. This is going to happen exactly the same thing. Okay. So now let us discuss why do we have to close them? Why do I have to close unused ends? Actually, nothing happened. It was I had a mistake and it worked with the mistake. But especially in your homeworks, you should do that. Why? Any idea? Nothing about file system. No, it's not related to file system. Because this file we are talking about has nothing to do with the file system. No security. Eh? 
Pipe phase from input here. It's, uh, it's a little bit close. It is about the semantics of close, closing. So we are talking about something that many processes can read and write, okay? It, no, it's a free memory, not, not exact other resources. You are actually, the thing is, uh, keeping a little bit of the uh, pipe uh, open for uh, like, let us say, once in a minute doesn't hurt much. So if your operating system is full of uh, 100,000 garbage pipes, it won't hurt your operating system much. It is not a big deal. So it is like, uh, like for megabytes of memory, something like that we are talking about. But if you, for example, create a, a stale pipe uh, once in a millisecond, okay, you, you will go out of resources, but it doesn't occupy much space. But the idea about uh, is about your applications uh, semantics. Uh, the pipe closing of a pipe occurs only everyone here closes that so that the next read here is going to get end of file. If you do not close, what happens? Let me just throw you that. So this pipe is open by process uh, P. So this pipe was looking like that. And P had to handle this side and this side. Then it forked. As soon as, as soon as it forks, we have a child process created, which has the same exact handles here and there. Then uh, assume uh, this, this clauses do not exist. Okay. Uh, the right hand, okay, right hand. Okay, so we forget about those clauses. And this, uh, we have a duplication of uh, right and. So this is, assume this is right, this is read and. I duplicated this as one. So I have now this. Then I exec ls. So p became ls. Okay. Then child has. Uh, close this one and child is duplicated this read and as zero. Okay, so we have the zero and it's properly closed this one. Now, if this child is to take end of file, how it is going to be possible? If child would uh, have this missing uh, clauses, it would be better. But the idea is this one. Unless everyone here, this one, this one, uh, we close that. This is the uh, critical part. Uh, we close this and C is not going to observe an end of file. And in a scenario that your processes do not terminate, for example, it is here terminates. Okay, TR here terminates. So there's no, there's not much of a problem. Uh, but TR is going to wait until all of the uh, data is available and an end of file is observed. As long as there is no end of file, TR is not going to terminate. And this is the critical point. If each and every uh, user of the right end uh, close that end or terminate. This is not going to get an end of file. This is very important for your homework because your in your homeworks, your processes are uh, alive. So they continue as long as game continues. And for example, a, actually we have messages for that, but if you didn't have messages, for example, 
uh, if one of the uh, players terminate, you wouldn't get that. You wouldn't get that information. So this is the case. So that's why we have this uh, principle. I'm, uh, I make it similar to that one. If you are not using, close it. Very basic. John, I think we could still get the same behavior in this example if we don't close the right end for TR, right? Right. Don't close FD1 for TR. Uh, yes. And it should hang, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So the, this, this was uh, the thing we should uh, keep open. In that case, TR is not going to go. If you like, we can uh, try to make it happen. This is the nice thing about having something open. Okay, it worked somehow. I'm not sure, uh, but uh, I believe. Okay, somehow it uh, take that. I'm not sure about that. Okay, uh, but uh, in uh, your homework, you will see that if you have a living case without executing, keeping this, uh, for example, instead of executing here, if you have this on a while loop, you read data, etc. If you have such a code, you would definitely observe that. Uh, okay, uh, so this is a very important thing I need to mention. So I have uh, varieties of pipes here. This is one of the complicated examples here. Uh, you can, I will not go over everything here. Uh, there are two pipes here. Uh, one pipe for communication, go, communi communication of two processes. So this is like a master, this is a slave. So this tells this one, what is the answer of three plus four? And this answers, it is seven, okay? And it goes like that. We have this type of communication here. Uh, in order to establish that, we have two pipes. So we have a pipe here and another pipe here. One is in one direction, the other is the other direction because uh, by default, the POSIX standard pipes are unidirectional. So on, there is only one uh, directional communication. Uh, in some of the uh, dialects like uh, Unix uh, system five release four, a pipe is bidirectional. So you can use both ends. So this uh, example is a, a little bit uh, tricky, but you can check it out to compare with this version. Dorka, I'm going to answer you in a moment. So here uh, in Sys5 release 4, we can use directly the pipe. In Linux, unfortunately, we don't have that, but uh, we have a trick. So we are using this trick. This is actually a socket, but it works like a, a pipe. Uh, rest of the call is almost identical. So we have this uh, things, extra parameters, but the rest, the uh, last parameter is the same so that we can use that instead. And our code will be much more clearer because uh, this process is using the zero end for reading and standard error. This process is really using the one end for standard output and standard input. And this process is some calculator. So it is working without any trouble. So I can execute it here. Okay, 730.94. So these are, are my expressions sent to the calculators and this is the results. Okay, now your questions. Hojan, what if you use it for some time, then wait for some time and use it again to be open closed during the waiting part? No, as long as the other party agrees that, uh, it, you can keep it open. For example, your homework, you will, the player will start and the player, player can wait for uh, two hours, then start writing. As long as you keep the file descriptors open, there is no problem. 
uh, Ege Akdeniz will disclose uploaded. Actually, I mentioned that uh, Ege, uh, it is in my GitHub repo last week. If you remember that, I can give you a link later. Okay. Uh, in GitHub repository, on or sheet, all sources, you can find it. Um, so this is a pipe, uh, typical pipe case. Uh, and actually, uh, you already uh, mentioned name pipes. Name pipes are easy because we can create it with just syntax like that. Uh, my pipe, let us call it. Uh, if you look uh, into file system, you will see that it is marked as P, okay? Not R, not D, uh, not dash, not D, and so on, but it is P. It says it's a pipe. Meaning that if you uh, open this uh, file, instead of making a hard disk backend or hard disk uh, block, it reserves you a pipe and it is called a name pipe. Uh, and the next process opening it is going to have an access it. So I, let us get this pipe. Minus N will put some line numbers. Other than that, it is not useful. And now I am going to write this pipe. And when I write it, it is going to the other end will read it. And vice versa. Okay, I am writing my pipe and I am going to read the line out of my pipe. Uh, only a tricky thing here is the lifetime of the pipe. Lifetime of the pipe is uh, depending on the number of processes keeping it open. The first process opening it is going to create the pipe and the second one will attach to it and as long as uh, a process uh, keeps it open, uh, not a process, uh, the last process in one of the end, keep it open, it is going to be alive. And last process in one of the end closes it, the other one will get the end of file or the error for it, and it's going to terminate. Uh, it is what happened here, okay? So read line is going to read only one line, but uh, because of this redirection, it closed the pipe, okay? It closed the pipe, and as long as one end is closed, there is no reader. There is no reader uh, in the pipe, and this one is trying to write it. This one gets actually some signal actually, and it terminates, okay? So this is the uh, actual story going on here. I can actually, uh, okay, later I can uh, explain that. So this is the idea in name pipe. So why do we need that? Question for you. Hocam, because in unnamed pipes, we, we have to fork the process. But when we have named files, we can use it without working. Um, exactly. So the, uh, there should be some parent-child relation or there should be some sort of inheritance mechanism in order to establish uh, an unnamed pipe connection. So these file descriptor tables, the file descriptor entries are uh, inherited from parent to child. So either uh, we have a parent-child relation, some ancestor relation, or uh, they have some sort of same parent relation. Okay, like in our first pipe example. Uh, or, no, I don't have that actually. Uh, so I can fork twice. So I have two children. I inherited the same pipe, then I close it, and these children can move on in the same pipe. So we have some family relation in anonymous pipes. Why? Because they are anonymous. 
they don't have any information in the user space, but their file descriptor table entries, and it is quite anonymous information. You have three. And three for this process is different than three in this other process, okay? So you cannot inherit the actual file structure behind it. And the mechanism they uh, introduced, actually it is like uh, late 70s, they introduced this uh, name pipes, is because if we have some sort of communication, this is actually uh, useful, especially when you are using temporary files. If you're coding and if you need some temporary file to write data so that the other process can read it, if you are doing that, consider doing that with uh, name pipes. It will be much more practical. Uh, and uh, is same is it same thing when we don't uh, use name pipe instead when we use ordinary files instead of named pipes? Uh, not the same thing, but it, it, if you are only uh, using for exchanging data, sequential read, sequential write, so one sequential writes, the other one sequential reads, uh, it is uh, exactly the same thing. So you will get almost same uh, power. But if you are randomly accessing the file, it is another story. Pipe says one uh, important uh, restriction that you cannot randomly access a pipe. There is no package boundary in the pipe. But the other one, you can go here, go back, and parse it in a uh, randomly accessed manner, but not, not the pipe. OK, so, uh, I'm talking about one is writing, the other one is reading. If you have such a uh, story, using name pipes will make sense. Okay. And there is no parent-child relation, of course. Uh, now, uh, so this is pipes. Actually, we can also uh, create uh, another scenario of uh, shell uh, pipe, but I will not go into that. Uh, let us uh, move on. Jan, uh -huh. maybe before we go on about our previous examples where we expected TR to hang. Uh -huh. I just checked it. It actually does, of course, but we don't realize because we don't wait for it. But if we write PS, uh -huh. You can see that TR hangs. Ah, OK. So we don't wait for? Uh, TR. Yeah, we don't wait for TR inside, inside the C code. So ah, okay. TR continues to run, but it doesn't hang the shell. But if we write PS, we see in the background that TR is still there. Oh, OK, uh, OK. okay. I, I see. Actually, the problem is this one. Uh, the uh, LS is the parent. So TR, when LS terminates, uh, it kills TR because it is the child. I believe it is what you mean. And I don't really think that's the case. I think they are not related in this case. OK, let us try. OK. OK, now it works. Now it hangs. Why? Because uh, the parent, uh, when parent terminates, it's going to send uh, the child to a terminate signal, which is seek up and the child terminates. And if we have uh, the roles reversed, the hanging process as the parent, since parent hangs, LS, although it is uh, completed, TR will hang because it is waiting on a pipe that it is still keeping open. Okay. Let's resolve. Thank you, Dennis. Actually, you can observe that with S trace pipe. As you can see, the uh, so the uh, we have uh, you can see parent and child with minus f. So this is what's going on. We have pipe processes and so on. Uh, the child terminates which is ls terminates, but parent, which is tr, is still waiting for input, where it keeps that file descriptor open. I can show it here. If I can find it. So this is 
these are good exercises to understand what is going on. And this is what really is going on. You see here, zero is the read end of the pipe and four is right end of the pipe. Both are kept open by the same process and it is reading some data that it doesn't write. Okay. Is it clear? Since there's still a right end open, it never gets the EUI. Yeah, yeah, never gets the end of life. Okay. It's actually a funny situation. So you're pressing your own shoe, something like that. Um, so now let us uh, go to our slides and move a little bit in that part. Uh, so these are all Errol mentioned, I believe, and we had examples of that. Uh, let us uh, spend a few words here, uh, the, especially the limitations. So we have uh, important limitations here. Uh, of course, the one important limitation is, is uh, it is just a sequence of cars. We don't have message boundary. For example, you can write five bytes message, then write 10 bytes message. The other end can read it as a single message, which is 15 bytes. Okay. So you can have that situations. For example, in your homework, if we don't have, if we didn't have uh, the message size is fixed. You could have read two messages instead of a single message. So you have to uh, parse your data, find the message size, understand that many bytes read, and so on. This is uh, what you need to handle. There is no message boundary. Second thing is um, there is no priority, of course. Uh, assume we have, uh, so it is simple FIFO implementation. Uh, in uh, network protocols, for example, there are urgent packets. So we have normal packets going on. Uh, and if it is urgent uh, in the queue of the operating system, the urgent packets will be delivered first. We may need such uh, applications. We don't have that. Uh, and of course we have, sorry, named, uh, we can still have this, uh, the, in the unnamed case, case, we don't have this family restriction. And in the name case, we still have, uh, we only have, one session. So assume you are implementing your server on a name pipe. Someone writes, you serve it. Then someone else comes, you serve it. You cannot serve two uh, processes using the same pipe. For each processes, you have to create a different session. So these are currently uh, important limitations. That's why we have uh, more uh complicated ipc tools like sockets or message queues the implementation is in the kernel uh, so they are allocated in the kernel and served by the kernel all reads and writes are actually carried out by the kernel uh, now let us talk about signals Actually, you are familiar with uh, signals because this um, annoying uh, six seg or segmentation fault and so on, division by zero and so on, I believe. Uh, your early days of C programming will teach you uh, about signals. Uh, uh, the uh, actual requ requirement for a signal is uh, having this an analogy to hardware interrupts. So when a hardware device writes data, it will inform 
the device by sending an interrupt so that interrupt based IO can be started. Uh, however, in the process verse, we don't have that mechanism because processes do not wait for interrupts. When interrupt occurs, it is handled by a kernel. The same analogy, the communication between device and the kernel uh, can be carried out in the user space for uh, communication between kernel and process and process and process. That's why they introduce this uh, signals, uh, sometimes we call them as uh, software interrupts. Uh, so uh, our purpose is to send some very trivial information to the user space from kernel and from other processes. Uh, it is very simple that it doesn't have any payload, it doesn't have any other data, but just a single, a single integer in around this 32 or 40 uh, distinct integer IDs. And uh, what you get is signal occurred, it's signal happened, that's it. No other information. Actually, we can have further information, but the most important one is this one. Uh, most of the cases, the purpose of a signal is to uh, kill the process, let the process die, because uh, uh, there is a situation that cannot be handled by the kernel, and it is killing the process. But sometimes uh, that signal does not kill the process, but it just informs it. So we have uh, such a table. These are most uh, common signals in uh, the Unix, Linux, and POSIX uh, compliant systems. I'm going to go over them. This is hang up. So it is like closing a phone line. Uh, Şöyle yapmamız lazım artık. Ben eski toprak olduğum için böyle kapatıyorum. Uh, the, uh, it is like uh, a terminal, a line terminal, and one end of the terminal is just powered off. The other end says that, okay, communication is over, so I'm going to hang up. Uh, but uh, the most important usage is about uh, the uh, parents to child. So by default, when parent process dies, it sends hop uh, signals, hang up signals to the child. So the child will know that parent does not exist, so it can also terminate. Uh, we have two uh, keyboard generated. So this is about kernel generated. This is about keyboard generated event, events. Uh, if you press Control C or Control backslash in the uh, standard input to the terminal of the uh, process, these signals are delivered and default action is terminate. Uh, we have some um, CPU uh, originated errors, so the, they are CPU exceptions actually. When CPU uh, executed an illegal operation, uh, the operating system sends process this. Why? Because CPU belongs to the process, if you remember. And process executed something wrong, which is not recoverable by the kernel. So it is going to send this information and the signal. Uh, this is about illegal instruction. So uh, in your instruction set, uh, sorry, in your instruction uh, register, uh, there is a value uh, which uh, doesn't uh, correspond to a machine instruction, illegal instruction. The other one is floating point exception, division by zero, etc. is here. Uh, bir de sigbus olacak da, sigbus'ı burada yazmamışız. Şuraya sigbus sıkıştırayım. Sigbus is about uh, illegal uh, address in the address bus. So that uh, 
by hardware that address does not exist. Uh, segmentation fault is about memory. If you remember our memory map, and there were some spaces in between, sometimes large, sometimes small spaces. If you hit those spaces, you will get segmentation fault. Also, uh, trying to access uh, a read-only area, read-write, or execute a, a non-executable area, you will get this one. Uh, SQL is ultimate terminate. So if you like one process to terminate, use uh, send that signal. You cannot overwrite or ignore the signal. So this is why it is important. The others can be ignored or overwritten, but not SQL. Uh, pipe is a special case. So you have a pipe and no one is reading it. Everyone closed this end, but you still keep the right end and you try to write this end. So this data is not going anywhere. Since this is the uh, only accessible uh, uh, file descriptor, uh, here is this read end and everyone closed that. No one has an access to that end. So you are writing to no nowhere. So you are just like hitting a wall, okay? So this so right. Think, uh, we got this one, or it was this one back where back when we were reading the line from the name type, right? Because we were actually trying to write the whole manual, mm -hmm. but the reader read a line, and then uh, Menelas was still trying to write to an empty pipe. So it got sick pipe and it terminated. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, this man ls written to name pipe the other one closed so uh, he actually received that you can try that in s trace as well uh, so uh, this signal also terminates as you can see most of them terminates basically seek alarm is user-based time uh, timer you can use uh, alarm signal call or if you like not, uh, this is in uh, resolution of seconds. This is in microseconds. Uh, this signal is sent to you. So it is uh, user request that to happen and kernel waits for that period and send that signal, okay? It is very uh, useful when you need something like timeout, for example, or you have some clock-like application. 15 seconds later, warn me kind of application or timeout. Uh, are these signals sent or received by process? Uh, this, is, uh, this is by kernel uh, plus CPU, let me say. Uh, CPipe is by kernel. Actually, most of them are by kernels. Uh, there is actually two resources. Actually, there is only one resource, which is kernel, by the way. But some of them are triggered by, so kernel delivers the signal in all of the cases. But some of them are triggered by CPU. Some of them are triggered by terminal process. Some of them are triggered by a special system called kill. And another one is alarm. All of them handled by kernel and actually uh, executed by kernel, but the origin differs. Okay. For example, this one is an interrupt actually, division by zero or uh, page fault. Actually, hardware interrupts handled by kernel, sent to the process. This is an IO interrupt, IO interrupt, kernel, signal. Uh, internal uh, timing events handled by kernel, signal. A system call by other process, kernel, signal, okay? Uh, th this is how it is, how they are triggered. Okay? Sick term is the uh, termination by default. If you like to terminate, we call this one instead of nine uh, because this is peaceful termination. So I want you to exit. Please tie up everything 
closed files, write your temporary files, flush your memory somewhere, what if you like, then terminate. So this is kindly asking process to terminate. This one is just killing it. So, so this is like a murder. This is like okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, the next one is sick child, and we hit someone which is ignored. So they do not. Uh, this signal uh, doesn't kill the process. Doesn't terminate the process. It is ignored by default. If any of the child is stopped or terminated, you will get this. So you can handle this for. Uh, wait uh, handled. If you remember, if you don't wait for a process, it will uh, remain zombie. You can use this, for example, to get that. Or in the homeworks, players terminated. You can understand from this. Uh, is the process kill following process kernel signal? The process kill following process says it's a system call. Process execute system call. If you remember, system calls are executed by the kernel, and kernel delivers the signal. Uh, six stop is a special case. Six stop and six count are special cases. They freeze the uh, process. Freeze so that it is not going to execute. So it will stay in non runnable, frozen state. It doesn't wait for anything. It doesn't uh, have any CPU usage. It is out of the scheduler, etc., until SIGCON. So this is a very special uh, place you put the process, freeze for a while, then wake up. Uh, if you by mistake press Ctrl Z, you observe that. Okay? Ctrl Z delivers that signal. Also, you can use kill system call to send it. Uh, these two are special cases. Uh, again, they are ignored. They are called user-defined signals. And their purpose is to have some uh, application uh, flexibility to user. Uh, for example, you can do this. You have a running software, seven days, 24 hours. You send CUSR1 to incre uh, increase verbosity of the application. So you will have more logs, more detailed logs. And then you send CUSR2 to decrement it. In this way, a running, a live program can be controlled. Um, so this is how we uh, control externally by uh, software. One example is the DD, DD utility. And DD is for uh, copying data from one device to device, raw device. Uh, have you ever used it? DD. Uh, if you send uh, CUSR1 to DD, it will uh, tell you how many bytes so far received sent. It's something like this. This stuff, yes, exactly. Uh, now, uh, actually, this, this is more detailed in the man page, man signal. You will see that some of uh, those uh, signals also core dump, like seek kill, seek ill, seek floating point ex exception, segmentation fault. So, we have uh, if you enable core dump. In the user space, they, they also uh, dump uh, a core file. Uh, getting that core file is like memory uh, print of the process, so that later in a debugger, for example, you can load that core dump and you will see where your application crashed. Uh, <laughs> uh, So actually, we are behind what I had so far. But okay, in the last five minutes, I'm going to uh, have a quiz. I prepared one. Actually, I uh, 
Okay, I, I can give you uh, the answer of the uh, second question. So let's hit the poll. You don't know the answer of the second question yet, so I'm going to give it to you. Answer of the second question is the third option. Signal is put on hold. No action is taken until it is unlocked. A first question can have multiple choices and it says does not cause a signal. Does not. I have a cheat sheet for you. Does not cause a signal. Second question answer is the third one. Signal is put on hold. Okay, another clue, you should click two options. Two options does not cause a signal, not one. Two of the five are correct. You have two minutes. Only five minutes, okay, total. Okay, one of the correct answers, you found it, but one of them is surprisingly low. İkinci soruya process is blocked diyenler var. Onun doğru cevabı signal is put on hold. Düzeltin. Doğru cevabı verdiğime yanlış vermeyin artık. Birbirimize ipucu vermeyin, chatten yazmak yasak. Recording equipment. Evet. 